Hi, we're looking at another example with some trig equations today. What we did before, uh, to solve for one of these trig equations, you would isolate the trig equation. Um, in this case, go from secant to cosine by flipping from root 2 to 1 over root 2. And then you would say, well, cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and 4. In quadrant 1, it's root 2 over 2, which means, uh, or, which means the cosine value is 45 degrees in quadrant 1. And in quadrant 4 would be 315 degrees. Now, what we're looking at today is something a little bit different, where instead of secant of x, we're looking at secant of 2x. Well, we start, we do nothing different. We're still solving the same way. Secant of 2x equals the square root of 2, which means that cosine of 2x would be flipping it, root 2 over 2, which means the same thing. We're going to get angles of 45 and 315. However, over here, this is what x equals, or what theta equals in the end. In this case, what we have on the inside is 2x. So 2x equals those numbers. Which means in the end, we would need to divide by 2 to be able to get our final answer. Which means x in this case, our answer would be 22.5 and 315 over 2, which should be 162.5. So all you're doing essentially is solving it the same way, but then whatever we had for our inside, we would need to divide by that number. So, let's look at a couple more examples to see what we mean by this. In this one here, same thing as before, we'll make it 2 cosine of 1 half theta equals 1, divided by 2, so cosine of a half theta equals 1 half. So, where we got cosine equaling 1 half? Well, that's at 60 degrees, and we want quadrants 1 and 4 for cosine, so that means 1 half theta, that's our inside, has to equal 60 degrees, and 300 degrees. So, our answer in the end should be, well, I need to divide by 1 half. That's the same as multiplying by 2. So, theta here equals 120 and 600. And yes, you could possibly get answers that are outside of your uh, 0 to 360 range like we've done before. See if you can give this one a try. I'd say pause the video real quick and see if you can get the right answer and then come back and check. Alright, how'd you do? You should divide by 2 and get sine of 2 theta equals root 3 over 2. Sine equals root 3 over 2 at 60 degrees. So, we should be looking for where sine is positive, which is quadrant 1. Quadrant 2, my answer center is 60 and 120, and that's what equals 2 theta. So, that means to get my final answer, I need to divide everything by 2. So, my answers are 30 and 60 degrees. So those are how you do your regular ones. Uh, we can do the exact same thing with our more complicated ones where we have uh, multiple, like in the first one where we have both secant and sine, or over here where we have a quadratic here for me. So let's start with the one here in yellow. Anytime we have two trig functions, we'll bring everything onto the same side. So root 3 secant of 4 theta minus 2 sine of 1 half theta secant 4 theta equals zero. We want to look now, can I pull anything out? Well, I have a secant 4 theta in both points. So, let's pull that secant of 4 theta out first. And what's left? I'll have a square root of 3 left from the first term, and a minus 2 sine of 1 half theta from the second term, equals zero. So, two factors equaling zero, that means each one individually should equal zero. Which means I will have these two equations now both equaling zero. In this one, if secant equals zero, that means that the reciprocal cosine should equal the reciprocal of zero. Zero over one will flip to one over zero, which is undefined. Cosine, your x value, is never undefined. So really, I learned absolutely nothing from that point of view, from that half of the equation. So we're going to have to focus just on this part. In this one, you'll have negative two sine of one half theta equals negative square root of three. Equals negative square root of three. Divide by negative two, that means sine of a half theta equals root three over two. Sine equals root three over two at 60 degrees and 120 degrees in quadrant two. So that's what a half theta equals, which means to get theta, I multiply by two, so I would have 120 and 240 as my possible answers. So those are my only possible answers then, are 120 and 240. Now, for this with the quadratic, same thing, get everything on the same side. So 2 sine squared of 3 theta 
plus sine of 3 theta minus 1 equals 0. If it helps, think of each sine as an x squared. So that would be the same as by 2x squared plus an x minus 1 to equal 0. And how would I factor this? Well, I would factor it by having factors like so. The 2x squared can only break up into 2x and x. Negative 1 can only break up into 1 and 1. So how can I make it so I have a positive x? Well, my plus is going to have to be here. My minus is going to have to be here. And check your work. 2x squared plus 2x minus an x minus 1. So we're in a good shape. Now, to turn that into with the signs, all I'm doing is, where I see an x, make it sine of 3 theta. So 2 sine 3 theta minus 1 times sine of 3 theta plus 1 equals 0. Two factors equal 0, that means each one individually equals 0. So 2 sine of 3 theta minus 1 is 0. Sine of 3 theta plus 1 is 0. Over here, I'm going to get that sine of 3 theta will equal 1 half. And over here, sine of 3 theta equals negative 1. For this one, sine equals negative, or sine equals 1 half at 30 degrees, and in quadrant 2 at 60 degrees. That's what 3 theta equals at your inside, which means theta here is 10 degrees and 20 degrees. And over here, when does sine equal negative 1? When does my y value equal negative 1? That's only when theta, uh, 3 theta in this case, y equals negative 1 at 270 degrees. So to get theta by itself, divide by 3, and I should have 90 degrees as my answer. So you solve it in the same way, like always, except in the end you'll need to divide by whatever we had on the inside of that trig function.